few different trig examples. So in this one, we have rectangle split by diagonal. So we have two right triangles, which is important because whenever we have that, we have our trig function, so Katoa, which we went over a little earlier in the year when we were doing Pythagorean theorem. Um, so here the figure shows rectangle. Um, if sine angle BDA is 5 over 13, what is the area of this rectangle? Now, I don't like to think of things in terms of BDA, so instead of there, I'm going to put a theta. It just makes me a little more comfortable. So basically, you have the sine of theta equals 5 over 13. And based on our SOHCAHTOA, we know that sine means opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, 5 lines up with the opposite side of the angle. So opposite of the angle is 5, and the hypotenuse we know is 13. Now, what we have to realize here is since this is a right triangle, what we can do is Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And again, it's not asking for, for this side. Always be careful of what the question's asking. We want the area of this rectangle. But we'll do Pythagorean theorem, which is 5 squared plus b squared, I don't know, and then the hypotenuse is 13 squared. So plug that in. I guess these are perfect squares. We don't really need to. We have 25 plus b squared equals 169. So minus 25 from both sides. And we get b squared equals... 144, take the square root of this, and we get B, or the base of the triangle, is equal to 12. Now we want the area of this whole rectangle. The area of a rectangle is base times height, or in this case we have a base of 12 and a height of 5, making the area of this rectangle 60 units squared. So it's going to be choice B. Interesting question. It says the equation sine of n degrees equals the cosine of 3n degrees. And that's true for some values as long as the value of n is in between 0 and 90. And we want to know what the value of n is. Now there are a few different ways to solve this. The first way I might do is to just simply guess and check as long as I you know, have access to a calculator, and I'm in degree mode. That's very important when we're doing um, these type of functions. So first one I want to do, I can plug in sine 22.5 degrees right into my calculator, and I get 0 0.38. Then I can do cosine of 3 times 22.5 degrees. plug that in, so that's cosine of 67.5 degrees, and then the cosine of 67.5, boom, it's 0.38, so these two match, so I know that the answer is choice A, so that's a kind of a quick way to do this, but it's also un important to understand, you know, the math behind this, so we could look at it um, algebraically. Now, one thing I know just from doing so many trig examples, the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5. This is probably a value we want to have memorized. And likewise, the cosine of 60 degrees is also 0.5. These are values of special right triangles. It's important for us to know. Now, basically, what this is saying is if we have a formula for this, <clears throat> The sine of x degrees is equal to the cosine of 90 degrees minus x degrees. So here we had sine of 30. Well, 90 minus 30 is 60, which is what we had there. So 
in this case, if we rewrite the problem, we have sine of n degrees equals the cosine of 3n degrees. Now, what that is, is we know that these two angles, for example, 30 and 60, when we combine those, they have to add up to 90. So same thing applies for this problem. So we have n degrees plus 3n degrees. We know, based on our rules, that that has to add up to 90. So if we solve this, n plus 3n is 4n equals 90. Divide both sides by 4. 90 divided by 4. Boom. n equals 22.5. So that's two different ways to solve this problem. Okay. In this third example, it's a grid-in or a fill-in example, and it doesn't give us two information, so this is probably one of the trickier trigonometry examples that you may see. But let's think about it. First, we have a right triangle, A, B, C. B is in the middle. Um, so angle CBA is right, so CBA is the right angle. So we are okay. Now, if the tangent of angle BAC is 0.8, what is the tangent of angle ACB? Now, it doesn't give us, and it does tell us it wants us in decimal form, which is important, but it doesn't give us any values of the sides. So again, I don't like when angles are like this. It doesn't, I can't visualize it right away. So I'm gonna change it. So B. AC, I'm going to make this theta. So angle, the tangent of theta is 0.8. Now, again, I should have kept it from earlier, but so, ka, toa. So the tangent relative to the red angle theta is the opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of theta Again, that's equal to the opposite over, over the adjacent is equal to 0.8. And here's where our strategy of plugging in numbers uh, is important. I need something to get me 0.8. Now, right away, I'm thinking that I want two numbers to divide to equal 0.8. Maybe this opposite side is equal to 80 and the adjacent side is equal to 100, right? 80 divided by 100 would be 0.8. So this works. So I'm gonna roll with that. So this opposite side, 80, and the adjacent side is 100. Now what this question wants is the tangent of angle ACB. Now let me use a different color. So ACB, now we're talking about this. I'll use the Greek letter phi. So the tangent of phi, again, that equals opposite over adjacent, but now they're kind of swapped. So opposite of this angle is 100, and adjacent to this angle is 80. So the tangent of phi equals 100 over 80. It wants it in decimal form. So I do 100 divided by 80, and I get 1.25.